Ultimate Fighting Champion legend for the match while Randy Couture. This is absolutely amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about what this is and what it's for? Uh, I run the uh, Extreme Couture GI Foundation. It's a 501c3. I started it 10 years ago. Uh, a lot of people don't realize I served in the United States Army from 1982 to 1988. And now obviously in a different time in my life uh, after that experience. And I think that experience, wearing that uniform, signing that oath, uh, affects everybody. We look at the world in a very particular way. We get a chance now to get back to some of these guys since 9-11 that are putting their asses on the line, frankly. Um, a lot of these guys in transition that have been wounded were stuck in the hospital for six months to two years, some of them. And the financial hole that they dig is pretty significant. Uh, I got to go to Iraq in 06 and see some of the guys on the ground in Iraq uh, for 12 days. And then in 07, uh, I got to go to D.C. at the Fisher House, which is where a lot of the family members stay and the caregivers stay. We did a barbecue uh, and then got to go and tour the wards and meet a bunch of families and hear about the issues that they're having and the financial issues uh, were pretty significant. So that's when I realized like, we got to do something. So we, we started this 501c3 with my gym staff here, Extreme Couture MMA in Las Vegas. Uh, those people already work for me. Mm -hmm. So th this is obviously a passion project for me, something that I care deeply about because I wore the uniform. We have no overhead. Every dime we raise goes into the hands of a family and a, a soldier and his family that's in transition that's been wounded. Um, coming off the best year that we've had, we raised $300,000 last year. And what we do is we go out to Washington, D.C. and sit down with the staff. They identify the families that are struggling and need a hand up, and we write a $10,000 check to each family. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really good day when we get to do that. So uh, Keith and, and Elfman Tactical getting involved this year, contributing this rifle, which is a pretty expensive piece of equipment. I think it's going to generate some great funds for the foundation. We're hoping to at least be able to help two families with what this rifle brings in. And uh, I, I, I'm, I mean, it's just amazing. You can't believe the workmanship that went into that. So excited about uh, the relationship, excited about getting to help some more soldiers and their families. So uh, Keith, why don't you come over and give us a little explanation about what went into it and what, what company is responsible for helping well, you? About nine months give or take work went into the rifle. Um, let me go ahead and start with the upper receiver because gentleman Richard standing right here, um, his company is actually who created the bolt action upper receiver that was absolutely necessary for what the concept I came up with was. I wanted it to be the slight evolution of the Revolutionary War musket. So semi-automatic just didn't play into that theme. Okay. Um, this gentleman left made an amazing product. Um, I can't tell you how smooth it functions out on the range. Um, I did have to alter it a little bit to allow more imagery to be engraved in the uh, upper receiver, but he was cool with that. Um, can you tell me a little about your receiver? I didn't know it was going to be a canvas, otherwise I'd have left a little more room. <laughs> uh, no, we're, we're uh, super, super honored to be considered in, in builds like this. Uh, so we designed the upper receivers just uh, specifically to bring more precision to the to the AR platforms. Uh, that's that's what we did. And, Thanks for calling me, Keith. Appreciate that. Glad to be a part of it. So, if you start at the back, the buttstock, I've actually had a lot of people ask where they can get one. Technically, you can't, but it's the only one on Earth. Um, I actually prototyped and designed this specifically for this rifle to allow as much imagery to be captured as possible from the founding of our country. Um, you'll notice actually Washington riding in with the soldiers, and that's Paul Revere tipping his hat to Washington riding in. Um, you got the 13 star Betsy Ross flag working backwards here. Okay, and again, bald eagle. Nothing screams America like a bald eagle. At the bottom here is actually the first coin minted at the founding of our country. Um, and what really set it all off was a speech by Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death, which is why we actually named the rifle Liberty. Okay, the scope was donated by Vortex Optics around the corner. Um, it's actually wrapped in the Declaration of Independence. All the signatures, even have the signatures and John so Hancock's is visible right there. Um, the lower receiver was donated by Titan Ballistics out of California, the grip by Hogue. Um, and of course, we're in Elfman Tactical's booth. They were generous enough to set us up with one of their adjustable AR triggers. And I think there's also safety here too. Yes, Elf's speed safety is in there. The trigger is actually set at two and a half pounds right now. Uh, McGowan Precision actually custom cut a 26 inch octagon bull barrel for us for this build. Um, 
there is something significant about the length and length also. Correct. So an original Revolutionary musket was 60 inches in length, and it came in anywhere 14 to 15 pounds. So again, we wanted it to be as close to that as possible. So the gun comes in at 46 inches in length and just a tick over 16 pounds. Uh, this is definitely not something that you need both hands to no. if and you're actually going to shoot it over. Right. On, on the other side of the gun, as uh, you can see, um, the imagery again. You, you got your founding fathers. You actually have a Revolutionary War cannon in the background behind them. Uh, moving into the Boston Tea Party, the Liberty Bell, a portion of the first paper currency when we decided to rebel. Washington crossing the Delaware and a, a portion of his farewell speech. Um, and then it just flows forward into, it's better to die on your feet than live on your knees. Okay, and the folks at Outlaw Ordnance um, in Louisiana, Chip and Nakia, I work with them closely and it took us two months of going back and forth to get all this artwork and figure out how to make it flow in a nice cohesive way that tells a story of our country, pays tribute to everybody who's done what they've done to make this such a great place to live. Once you actually figure out the layout, then it's a matter of finding somebody who's going to be able to lay it out and do the work to engrave it. Correct. Now, and who we have that, that, that That's work. outlaw ordinance. Unfortunately, Chip and Nakia had a prior engagement. They couldn't be here, um, but they took care of all the engraving and the Cerakote, this amazing paint job that they did. Um, not someone else who couldn't be here. This is actually the lid. We actually commissioned a rope handle wooden <coughs> crate like they would have shipped rifles back then. And uh, it actually was done by... Uh, Zach Brown Customs or Southern Ground and has a clevis to make it wall mountable so whoever wins it in the auction can actually mount the whole crate with the rifle on the wall. I know everybody that's burned into the lid cover on this, these are all the different companies that have had a hand everybody in creating this. Correct. Some are here at SHOT Show, some aren't. All right, now when, when it's time for somebody to actually take ownership of this, how exactly is this going to happen? Well, we've created an auction site that I believe is live right now, right. and you can go on and bid on on this rifle and, and contribute and, and hopefully be the one that comes home with it. Uh, and then, obviously, we, we have an FFL here in Las Vegas. We'll do the transfer, and, and, and we'll assume the ownership with that. Do we have a date that we're going to have a cutoff period? It's uh, uh, going to run for one year, so uh, the cutoff will be January 24th of next year. All right, so within one year, we have a lot of money that's going to have to be raised for this. Now, are we going to have an option of being able to raise additional monies for the charity that over and above what we're expecting? Well, anybody that wants to contribute to Extreme Couture GI Foundation can go to xcgif.org. You can, first of all, look at our calendar, see what our up upcoming events are. I think our next event is the Border Brawl up in Kansas City, Missouri, the Missouri chapter and, and an Illinois chapter. Um, and then and obviously the Vegas chapter is the original chapter here. Uh, so you can see the calendar. Come hang out with us. Come come to one of our rides. Come to come to the wrestling meet. Come come to our poker tournament. All the different things that we do to raise funds for this foundation. But if you just want to donate and you can't make it to an event, then you can donate online as well through, through the website. Well, I, I can tell you as soon as we get this published, we're going to have the links to GI Foundation. We're going to have the links on our website. We're going to encourage people to donate. We'll have a link directly to it. Uh, and you we'll can find the link for the you. gun at Extreme Couture GI Foundation, xcgif.org as well. So and We're going to have that linked as well because we want to give you guys as much uh, publicity on this as we possibly can and as much assistance. For what this rifle is and to who this is going to benefit, there is no reason why everybody can't dig a little bit into their pocket and say thank you to the men and women who put their lives on the line every day to give us the free air that we have in our lungs. I get very emotional. Uh, I have to calm down a second because uh, you know, I, I know personally I've done a lot of work for charity when it comes to uh, military veterans and I know the level of appreciation that they display to me whenever somebody reaches out to them and to have somebody the stature of Randy Couture that can step up to the plate and do this and uh, Keith Barry in 5150 creating such an amazing rifle this is something that I wish to God more people in your position not necessarily the, the rough and tumble kind of guy that you are, but you know we have a lot of people of influence in this country that really need to step up to bat and do more for our American heroes. And Randy, again, thank you so so very much. God bless you for all you do. Keith, thank you very much. Thank you.